Hello and welcome to this video on precipitation measurements. Specifically, we're looking at point measurements and we're working our way through recording rain gauges. We've already talked about the tipping bucket rain gauge and weighing rain gauges in other videos. This one will focus on the capacitance type rain gauge, recording rain gauge, and also the optical rain gauge. The capacitance type rain gauge uh, uses, of course, as the name implies, capacitance. So um, it has a capacitive transducer and also an electric circuit, and you get output in voltage, which is directly proportional to the height of precipitation or water in this rain gauge. The nice thing about this rain gauge is that um, it can be tipped um, at you know, certain angles and still record the amount of precipitation accurately. So for this reason, it's usually used on objects that are not it's very stationary, things like buoys that uh, are affected by waves, or even on ships to measure precipitation. This is how it's constructed. It has um, a measuring tube and also a funnel. And then there is a rod that is uh, stainless steel. It's uh, Teflon coated that goes down inside this measuring tube and it's surrounded by water. So here is your um, capacitor. You charge that metal rod the dielectric is the Teflon around the metal rod, and then also the water is charged. So you have uh, charged rainwater, charged metal rod, and then a dielectric, which is uh, the Teflon. Now, if you remember, capacitance depends upon the area of the charged plates. The rainwater is, in effect, one charged plate. The metal rod is another charged plate. So as water increases in the measuring tube, it increases the area, and as a result, the, capac the capacitance increases. The previous shot slide showed a top-down view of this capacitance rain gauge. Here's a cross-section view. You can see that uh, rainfall enters the funnel and is funneled down into the measuring tube. The surface area of this measuring tube increases the water that's uh, surrounding the Teflon coated uh, stainless steel rod and as a result the capacitance increases because capacitance is directly proportional to the area of the charged plate. So if you can measure the capacitance that can be converted into an analog voltage and as a result the voltage is directly proportional to the height of the water in this collector tube. These capacitance type rain gauges are usually in remote places like on buoys. So as a result, they have to be drained remotely. And they do that through a siphon system, meaning that as the rainwater increases in the measuring tube, eventually it gets to a height where the pressure will force the water through the siphoning tube. And then that is drained outside of the measuring tube. Usually this takes about 30 seconds to drain. So while it's raining, you can't, uh, while it's draining, you can't measure the rainwater's height. Here's some numbers for you as far as uh, this capacitance type rain gauge. Threshold is uh, four one hundredths of an inch of precipitation, and its accuracy is four one hundredths inch. It can catch uh, the diameter of the catchment area or the opening is 4.4 inches, so it's a little bit smaller than your eight inch rain gauge. And the, it can measure up to 2.1 inches before it's siphoned and drained. Another type of rain gauge that's used is an optical rain gauge. And the way this works is that there is a transmitter and a receiver. The transmitter sends an, uh, a light beam or a beam uh, of radiation towards a receiver. And as precipitation falls in between the transmitter and the receiver, the scintillation of the beam, the light, uh, determines the type of precipitation and also the intensity of the precipitation. Scintillation is the 
uh, fluctuations in the amplitude and phase of electromagnetic waves that propagate through some medium. In our atmosphere, uh, we see this every night when we look at the stars. If we have a clear sky, we can see the stars twinkling, and that's the, uh, the visible uh, radiation coming through our atmosphere and then being absorbed and, and affected by the molecules in our atmosphere, the oxygen, nitrogen, and argon in our atmosphere. Very similarly, uh, they use a particular wavelength um, and they know the scintillation properties of uh, that wavelength and the size, uh, the intensity, and the type of precipitation that's falling. Uh, usually, in most applications, they use um, an infrared um, light-emitting diode to generate um, the electromagnetic radiation. As precipitation falls through the infrared beam, it uh, causes scintillation that's detected by the photodetector. And the type of scintillation uh, can be uh, calibrated and uh, determined that determines the type of precipitation, the amount of precipitation, and the intensity. So as I mentioned, the scintillation depends upon how big the drop is, the drop size, uh, how fast it's falling, and also the number of drops. The sensor is only sensitive to vertical precipitation. The way they do that is they have a vertical slit uh, so it is only looking at the precipitation that's falling vertically and not horizontally. Uh, also, based on the frequency of scintillation or fluctuation of the beam, they can determine whether it's uh, snow or rain. The advantages to an optical rain gauge is that there's no moving parts, you don't need a human, it's pretty rugged, and it eliminates the exposure error that's the result of wind. Uh, its dynamic range typically is somewhere um, the range between uh, four one thousandths of an inch of precipitation all the way up to close to 20 inches of precipitation per hour. And accumulation, it can measure up to 39.4 inches of precipitation. They say that it has an accuracy of 5% and the resolution is uh, down to, uh, oh gosh, uh, tens of thousands of an inch of precipitation. So that's a little bit about capacitance type devices and also optical type devices in measuring rainfall rates.